So hello there, welcome to this lesson which is on um, 20 golden rules in writing multiple choice test items. I'm Peter Okibukola of Lagos State University, uh, Nigeria. I'm sure you will enjoy this lesson. So what are the objectives of our lesson? Just two goals that we're hoping to achieve. We want to describe the structure of a multiple choice test item. That's like looking at its anatomy. And then the second thing is that using 20 guidelines, what we have called the 20 golden rules, will then develop multiple choice test items. Well, let us now meet uh, the participants in our class. She see at the biology. About computer studies. computer studies. Grace Oluwade, English. So let's shift gear to the heart of the matter. I will begin with the structure of the multiple choice test item. It has two main components. You have the stem. And then you have, did you see the roots? Oh, no. Uh, talk about anatomy, of course. We have these as the options or the alternatives. In this case, we have four of them. Now, one of the alternatives is, or the options, is the best answer or the correct answer. And it's called the key. That's the key which will open the door of the question. And then you have the others are called distractors because they are supposed to distract those who do not know the answer to the uh, question. Now, we move on quickly to the seven objective, which will be the 20 golden rules in writing multiple choice. 20, why 20? Because I decided to pick the best 20, more or less. So let's take on rule number one. Rule number one states, you instruct students to choose the best answer rather than the correct answer because there could be vigorous in uh, knowledge and you may be wrong at some point so the best thing to do is to have the instruction written as this select the alternative a to d that best answers the question or completes the statement very simple rule which many people miss out because they just have the uh, the heading for the question paper uh, ESC 202 science curriculum development and then just go on with the uh, the multiple choice test items items but we must have this instruction to it that is rule number one what about rule number two rule number two has to do with the you know the layout the typography now look at the one on the left which uh, okay the rule states arrange the options vertically vertical is like this and horizontal is like this so the preference for the better one is to have the options arranged horizontally so it's readable if you cluster things up like this in the uh, horizontal one then there's uh, there's some some challenge and some teachers who want to economize if you like save space by cramping so many items together but that is not the way to uh, present, present this. Now, the third rule is that the term and options should follow standard syntactical and punctuation rules. What does this mean? You see, if you're writing a term and it's running along as a sentence that's along the options, you should let it show that the sentence is running along. Look at this. In many English-speaking countries, uh, we're running a like, course of study because most tertiary textbooks are written in English. Now, if you move this up to continue this sentence, the M shouldn't start with a capital letter. So the better option is to do it like this, to have because the M is lowercase, the S is lowercase, and, and since the sentence is stopping, you put a punctuation mark, full stop. So this is the poor way of doing it, and this is the better way of uh, laying it out. But if the step ends with a question, they have to put a question mark at the end of that, of the uh, at the end of that question, 
and then run the sentences you know regular uh, normally like uh, use, using sentence case that is rule number three let's go on to rule number four rule number four is saying we should not test many things in one question rather rather we should test multiple concepts we should write if there are multiple concepts separate them have different questions for different concepts look at this poorly written one look at this term all animals are heterotrophs what does this mean also what is the characteristic component of cell walls of plants jumble things together and then you have the options you know having the two answers like this look at the better one taking only the first bit here all animals are heterotrophs what does this mean the feed on so, on. so rule number four is we should not test many things in one question. We are moving to rule number five, and we are a quarter way there. Rule number five, what, what, what does it state? Rule number five states, by the way, I've numbered these rules just uh, by uh, as, as, as I would like them to be numbered. There's no uh, law that says that this should be rule number five, rule number six, but for, my, for the purpose of this presentation, I've labeled it rule number five. The stem should present a problem or ask a question. Look at the writer here. It should be possible to answer the question with the stem covered. In other words, if you have a good stem and you cover all the options, the candidate or the test taker should be able to answer that question in the stem. And when he or she opens the options, we will say, oh, yes, this is the option. But look at this poorly written one. OACSF, what does it mean? Look, OACSF is Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation in Nigeria. But look at the option. A is an acronym. Of course, it's an acronym. Has an e-learning program. Of course, it has an e-learning program. It's located in Abuja. Yes, of course. It posts for our civil servants. Yes, of course. So this does not present a problem or, or, or ask a question. Look at the better one. What is the major responsibility of OACSF? You can see all the options are there. So that's rule number five. Your stem. We're, we're actually looking at stem. The last three. We're looking at looking at the stem. How the stem uh, of the multiple choice questions can be composed. Yes, I tell you, we're moving. Moving on now to rule number six. Rule number six states that all words and phrases that are common to all the options should be moved to the step. Look at this item that we say is poorly written. Some participants could not register because they enter the because they have this, because they have this, they feel because they already know that. So the better way to render this is to harvest all of this because they and put it just once in the stem. And so it goes like this. Some participants could not register because they and the thing flows all the way down. So if you have words and phrases that are repeating for all, for all the options, you move them to the step. That is rule number six. What about rule number seven? Rule number seven is avoid clues to the answer in the stem. So you have this term. By the way, we are still looking at this term. The April 2015 governorship election is scheduled to hold on. You can see April, 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 and then you see May, May. So surely the the smart, of course, most of them are smart test. Uh, the candidate will just narrow himself or herself to these two. But look at this one. When is the governorship election scheduled to hold? So you must have, avoid all clues that will give the lead to the to the key. That's rule number seven. Moving on now to rule number eight. Rule number eight is that don't be too wordy and put up manner of stories in the stem. So we must eliminate excessive wording and irrelevant information in writing the stem. Go straight to the point, use as few words as possible in a way that the question is very clear and the options are also clear. Rule number nine. When using incomplete statements, you should avoid beginning the sentence or the stem with a blank space. Look at this one. Dash is a malaria parasite. 
Now, the better rendition is to say an example of a minor price like this. You have this gap here. Now, I must stress that as much as possible, let us avoid incomplete statements with such blanks. Rather, like we say, it's better. You know, the other one is good, it's better to just say which of the following is a malaria parasite. So avoid items dash, 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 and making gaps in there. Go ahead to call uh, to render it as a question. Rule number 10. Rule number 10 makes intuitive sense. It does not, it, it, it drags you away from confusion because the rule reads, ensure that there is only one option that best answers the question. Now, if you have three or four options that are correct, then the candidates will tell you, tell the person who will make an issue out of that. So this rule number 10 is a very important rule. Ensure that that correct option is the one that, that, that there's no conflicting. No other, no other one is conflicting uh, with it. Hey, rule number 11, where are you? Yeah, rule number 11, here you are. Now, in writing the distractors, we should not just put anything there because we are short of options. We should dig in for those common misconceptions, common misconceptions that students have or common mistakes. Because you recall that one of the advantages of the multiple choice test is to enable us to know where the uh, students' problem, challenges are so we can remedy this diagnostic, multiple choice test, choice tests are diagnostic if properly written. So the rule, the rule, uh, rule number 10 states, distractors should sound right to a student who lacks knowledge of the concept but are clearly wrong. Now, rule number 12. Rule number 12, yeah, this rule is, uh, I, we want all the lazy uh, test writers to know this. Because when people are short of options, when they they are now looking for what option to put you are looking at you're having a four option multiple choice test item and you can recall only one or two uh, options good options and they just put all of the above and none of the above we should avoid that that's rule number 12. now rule number 13. rule number 13 says that numerical options should be arranged in either ascending or descending order. Look at this poorly written one. How much does a federal permanent secretary earn in a month on the average? You can see 1.5. It goes down now to 0 0.8. It goes up to 1.8 and it goes up to 0 0.5. The better way to do it is to either to arrange in ascending or descending. You can see 0 0.8 million, 1.8 million naira, 1.5 million naira, and 3.5 million naira. Well, I like to end this one up. This 3.5. So you arrange either in ascending or descending order, but not in a random manner. Moving on to rule number 14. Rule number 14 states, states, as much as possible, options should be of equal length, or two should be short and two long. So it, it, usually the long option is uh, the typically correct. Uh, so test takers or candidates know this. So look at this one, increased use. The, the most important reason why under five mortality is high in Nigeria is there's a, you can see this D, very long. You just access to good medical care, making mothers resort to herbal medicines at home. So the better way to render it is to ensure that the options are of nearly equal length. And as we stated here, two of them can be short and two can be long. Let's get on now to rule number 15. Rule number 15 is that we should avoid, the, the rule states, avoid making the correct options or keys occur in predictable patterns. So you now have your correct answers, uh, uh, A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 in that, in that sequence, or A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Candidates are very smart. They can guess. I mean, they can know this kind of pattern and uh, they, they, they will make the whole thing uh, quite, quite unpleasant. So the, the, the goal here is to keep correct answers in random positions. That is rule number 15. So let's take on rule number 16, which is a general rule. 
Uh, the rule states reduce number of negatively worded stems to the barest minimum. What do you mean by negatively worded? Negatively worded will have such words as except and not. And if you have these words there, they have to be in capital letters or underlined and make you know bold enough for the uh, candidate or the student or testee to, to, to see and not. My suggestion is that we should have a maximum of 10% of the total number of items being such negative, negatively worded items with negative, negatively worded stems. So if you have like 10 items, only one should be negatively worded. Reason is that negatively worded uh, items demand a lot of load, reading load and mental juggling from the testee or candidate you say oh yeah it means i said oh no i mean not no so we should we should not give the candidates that kind of stress rule number 17 rule number 17 st uh, states avoid answering one question in the test by giving the answer somewhere else in the test and when the candidate now says it or the student will not go back to effect the change so don't let's avoid uh, a situation like that that's rule number 17. Rule number 18 is do not include alternatives such as both A and D or all but C as options. Now, this is very complicated for the, for the test taker, for the candidate. And it's very confusing, both A and D and all but C options. Let us try to avoid this. That's our rule number 18. Rule number 19, that's our last but one rule, it states that we should make the first few multiple choice questions relatively quick and easy. That is to give them kind of appetizer. They start with number one, it's easy, number two, and then it goes progressively uh, uh, difficult. That's rule number 20, 19. What about the last rule? Rule number 20. We're reading it, ringing the bell now. Rule number 20 states, do not attach more than two questions to a diagram. You know, you have a diagram, say, uh, use diagram below to answer questions one and two, or questions three and four. That is good enough. But when you say, use the diagram below to answer questions one, two, three, four, five, and six, that is not good enough. And that's our rule number 20. So we have come to the end of this lesson. So what did we learn? We looked at the anatomy of the multiple choice test item. It has a stem, it has options. Options, either distractors, or the key. We also discussed 20 golden rules for writing the multiple choice test items. As I mentioned, the 20 golden rules are just important rules. I've decided to number them my way. From 1 to 20. So, in the next lesson, we shall be using these golden rules to develop test items using Bloom's taxonomy. It promises to be an exciting lesson. For now, it is. Bye.